uh, exergy uh, can be transferred added to or uh, removed from a system as a result of its interaction with the surroundings uh, and the interactions with the surroundings may be uh, classified as addition or removal of work heat and mass okay. so we will uh, take a look at uh, what each one of this interaction does uh, in terms of exergy change of the system okay so let us first look at uh, work interaction so when a certain amount of uh, work is done by the system let's say an amount of work w is done by the system its exergy decreases by w okay so we saw in our earlier example or earlier illustration so here the system uh, does a certain amount of work as it uh, undergoes an expansion process so as it does work its exergy decreases because it is doing uh, work by uh, raising the mass okay so as the system does work its exergy decreases by how much ever uh, work it uh, puts out okay so so if a system does an amount of work w its exergy decreases by uh, exactly that same amount and when an amount of work w is done on the system its exergy increases by the same amount w since exergy is work work transfer to a system uh, or from the system uh, can be easily uh, converted to or can be directly converted to exergy change okay now uh, addition or removal of mass uh, to a system or in a device also causes an exergy change. Okay? So, let us say that we have uh, uh, a certain amount of mass with a specific exergy phi. Then if I add uh, that, that much amount of mass to the system, let us say m to the system, then the exergy of the system increases by an amount equal to m times phi. Okay. If that much mass is removed from the system, then the exergy of the system decreases by that much amount. Okay. So, this is also relatively straightforward to calculate or compute. Okay. Now, when it comes to heat interaction and transfer of exergy uh, through a heat interaction, we have to be uh, somewhat more careful because depending upon the uh, temperature of the system with respect to the ambient temperature, whether the temperature of the system is greater than or less than the ambient temperature, the direction of heat flow and exergy flow can be opposite to each other. Okay. And that is what we will take a uh, close look at next. Now, here um, contours of exergy x equal to constant are plotted on a PT uh, coordinate system. Okay? So, notice that this line corresponds to temperature T equal to T naught the ambient temperature that is this line here and the horizontal line uh, corresponds to uh, P equal to P naught. Okay? And the origin of course is the uh, ambient state itself P equal to P naught and T equal to T naught. So, x equal to 0 at the origin and since exergy is positive, uh, it increases in the outward direction, radially outward direction as shown here. It increases in the radially outward direction. Okay? Now, let us consider uh, systems at initially at four different states A, B, C and D. Okay. Now, if you take uh, a system initially at state A, if we add heat to this system, its temperature increases and uh, since it is initially at a temperature greater than T naught, its temperature increases. So, its exergy also increases and a new state is in the radially outward direction because its temperature uh, increases and its exergy also increases. Similarly, if I add heat to a system which is initially at state B, since its temperature is greater than T naught as a result of addition of initially greater than T naught as a result of addition of heat, its temperature is also likely to increase and it also moves uh, radially away from the origin. So, its exergy increases. Now, conversely, if I uh, uh, remove heat from this system or if this system supplies heat to some other device, then its temperature will decrease and its exergy also decreases. So, it moves in the radially inward direction and the same is true for this uh, system also which is initially at a temperature greater than T naught. Now, if I uh, if I look at uh, the systems which are initially at uh, states uh, C and D, 
Now, temperature of system C initially is less than T naught. If I add heat to the system, then its temperature uh, increases and as a result, it moves towards the origin like this. So, its exergy actually decreases. If I supply heat to this system, then its exergy actually decreases in contrast to systems which were initially at states A and B. Similarly, since uh, the system at state D is initially at a temperature less than uh, T naught, if I supply heat to the system, its temperature increases and consequently it moves towards the origin. So, its exergy decreases. Now, conversely and uh, quite unintuitively, if I remove heat from this system, its temperature decreases and the state point moves radially outward and as a result, its exergy also increases. Remember, exergy increases in the outward direction as shown here. So, when the state point moves away from the origin, uh, the exergy of that state point is higher. So, the exergy increases in this case when I remove heat from this system. Similarly, for the system which is initially at state D, if I remove heat uh, from the system, its exergy actually uh, increases. Okay, so, you can see that the direction of heat transfer and uh, exergy, uh, exergy transfer or opposite uh, depending upon whether the uh, temperature is uh, greater than T naught or less than T naught. Okay, so, that is something that we should keep in mind. Let us explore this in greater detail and uh, see what happens to these four in these four situations. Okay, so, let us say that initially we have uh, system which is at a temperature T greater than T naught. Now, let us say that this, uh, uh, let us say that initially we have, um, uh, we have something which is at a temperature greater than T naught. Um, I do not want to, we can call it a system, yeah, no problem. So, let us say that we initially have a system which is at a temperature greater than T naught. Let us say that this system supplies a certain amount of heat Q to some other uh, device or system. Okay. Now, we want to understand, we, we know that there is a heat transfer, we want to understand what the corresponding exergy transfer is. Okay. To understand this, we envisage a reversible engine or that operates between the system at temperature greater than T naught and the ambient which is at T naught. Okay. So, since this reversible engine is supplied with an amount of heat Q, it produces an amount of work W which is equal to Q times 1 minus T naught over T. Now, since this is a perfectly reversible engine, there are no internal or external irreversibilities. So, um, uh, we are recovering an amount of exergy X equal to W from this engine. And since there are no external or internal irreversibilities, this means that uh, exergy is not destroyed within this engine. That means that if you are recovering an amount of exergy X equal to W from this engine, it must have been supplied with an amount of exergy X equal to W. Okay? That is what is shown here. Okay? Let us uh, go through this one more time. This engine produces an amount of work equal to W. So, from an exergy perspective, uh, an amount of exergy W is uh, recovered from this engine R. Okay? Amount of uh, exergy X equal to W is recovered from this engine R. Since it is a reversible engine, there are no internal or external irreversibilities. No exergy is destroyed within this engine. Okay? So, if you recover an amount of uh, exergy X from this engine, that means that it must have been supplied with an amount of exergy X in the first place. Okay? So, now if we look at this from the perspective of uh, the this system which was initially at temperature greater than T naught, when such a system supplies an amount of heat Q, it is also equivalently supplying an amount of uh, exergy X equal to Q times 1 minus T naught over T. So, when a system at temperature greater than uh, the ambient temperature supplies an amount of heat Q, it supplies an amount of exergy X equal to Q times 1 over, I am sorry, Q times 1 minus T naught over T. Now, the same system 
if it receives an amount of heat q then for this situation we can envisage a reversible heat pump that operates between the ambient at temperature t naught and this system which is at a temperature greater than t naught now for this uh, um, heat pump to work we need to supply an amount of work w okay and the amount of for now and the amount of work w may be evaluated like this so for this reversible heat pump to reject an amount of heat q to this uh, to this system we can evaluate the amount of work that is required uh, to accomplish that okay that is equal to q times 1 minus t naught over t so we can envisage a reversible heat pump that operates between the ambient and the system which is at temperature uh, greater than t naught and rejects an amount of heat q to this system while receiving an amount of work w equal to q times 1 minus t naught over t now from an exergy perspective when this engine is supplied with an amount of work equal to w it is also being supplied with an amount of exergy x equal to w since it is a perfectly reversible engine there is no exergy destruction within the engine this means that whatever exergy is supplied to the engine must be recovered the same amount of exergy must be recovered and that is what is indicated here so we may summarize this situation as follows when a system at temperature greater than t naught receives an amount of heat q equivalently it receives an am amount of exergy x equal to q times 1 minus t naught over t and the direction of heat transfer and exergy transfer are the same in these cases okay when the uh, temperature of the system that receives or supplies heat is greater than t naught the ambient temperature now let us um, look at a system which is at temperature t less than t naught okay now let us say that this system receives an amount of heat q okay now we envisage a reversible engine or which operates between the ambient which is at t naught and this system which is at a temperature less than t naught okay it rejects an amount of heat q to this system and produces an amount of work w which is equal to q times t naught over t minus 1 okay now uh, from an exergy perspective okay since this engine produces a certain amount of work w that means an amount of exergy x equal to w is recovered from the engine since the engine is reversible without any internal or external irreversibilities there is no exergy destruction consequently if we recover an amount of uh, exergy x equal to w from this engine it must have been supplied with an amount of exergy x equal to w in the first place that is what is indicated here okay so let us summarize this in words when a system which is at a temperature less than t naught receives an amount of heat q it is equivalently supplying an amount of exergy x equal to q times t naught over t minus 1 okay notice that the direction of heat transfer and the direction of exergy transfer are opposite in this case okay so direction of heat transfer and direction of exergy transfer are opposite in this case next same system at a temperature less than uh, t naught let us say that it supplies an amount of heat q okay this is for instance what would happen in the case of a refrigerator so when the refrigerant enters the refrigerated compartment heat is picked up from the refrigerated compartment and remember the refrigerated compartment is at a temperature less than the ambient temperature okay so this is for instance what happens in a refrigerator so the system at a temperature less than t naught supplies an amount of heat q so i can easily uh, visualize or envision a refrigerator which operates between the ambient t naught and this uh, system which is at a temperature less than t naught while being supplied with an amount of work w which is equal to q times t naught over t minus 1 
So, the refrigerator is supplied with an amount of work equal to W and it transfers an amount of heat Q from the uh, reservoir which is at a temperature T naught and rejects an amount of heat Q naught to the ambient. In terms of exergy, since the engine is supplied with an amount of work W, we are also supplying the engine with an amount of <coughs> exergy X equal to W. And since the engine is reversible without any internal or external irreversibilities, there is no exergy destruction, which means that <coughs> whatever exergy is supplied to the engine must be recovered. So, that is what is shown here. Okay. So, an amount of exergy X equal to W is recovered from this engine. Okay. Now, you can see that <coughs> the direction of heat transfer and the direction of exergy transfer are opposite to each other in this case also. So, when a reservoir or system at temperature T less than T naught supplies an amount of heat Q, it is equivalently receiving an amount of exergy X equal to Q times T naught over T minus 1. So, in these two cases, the direction of uh, heat transfer and exergy transfer are opposite. So, when the system is at a temperature less than T naught, the direction of heat transfer and exergy transfer are opposite. When the system is at a temperature greater than T naught, the direction of heat transfer and exergy transfer are the same. This is very, very important. That is why we said that it is easy to figure out the uh, amount of exergy transferred and the direction of exergy transfer in the case of work transfer and in the case of mass transfer. Whereas, in the case of heat transfer, the direction of exergy transfer and heat transfer are dependent upon whether the system that is receiving or supplying the heat is at a temperature greater than or less than the ambient temperature. So, this is very important uh, later on. In fact, all these uh, situations are important because we will encounter them when we look at thermodynamic cycles for power producing plants as well as power absorbing uh, devices. And when we do uh, a second law analysis for these devices, this is very, very important being able to figure out whether exergy is transferred to the system or exergy is recovered from the system is very important uh, for doing exergy balance and then uh, evaluating second law efficiency. Okay, so now we can put all these things together. You may recall that we started uh, this module by stating that uh, uh, a different metric is required. One apart from energy based metric is required for uh, properly evaluating the performance of devices which are executing non flow or flow processes. Okay. And we pointed out some shortcomings in the uh, energy based definitions and we also pointed out that isentropic efficiency was very limited in its usefulness or utility. And so, we said that we will introduce a new concept or notion called exergy and we have developed that so far. Okay. Now, we will put it together and then define uh, second law efficiency for different types of devices, work producing device, work absorbing device and other devices. And the nice thing about this uh, definition is that it is equally applicable to flow as well as non-flow process. Uh, no separate uh, uh, definition uh, is required for flow or non-flow process. Okay. So, Second law efficiency for a work producing device is defined like this W u which is the useful work we can say actual useful work although that is understood. So, W u actual divided by W u reversible. So, we have a device which produces a certain amount of work it could be let us say a piston cylinder mechanism okay? as the uh, flow undergoes expansion it produces a certain amount of work. Okay. So, we know we can evaluate the uh, actual amount of work perhaps from integral PDV and the reversible work you may recall is nothing but the change in exergy of the system. Remember exergy of the system decreases because it is uh, producing work. So, change in exergy in this case we want a positive number. So, we write it as x1 minus x2. And you may also recall uh, that the actual work is less than the uh, ideal or reversible work by the amount of lost work which is nothing but T0 times sigma. So, W u actual 
is equal to w u reversible minus t 0 times sigma. So, and this was the last work. So, if we substitute this into this expression, we end up with the uh, following form for uh, the second law efficiency of this particular device. Now, in case it is a, a steady flow device, we will simply understand that w u means uh, w x dot and the, that there is no work done in displacing the atmosphere in this case. Whereas, when we are uh, evaluating w u actual for a non flow device, we need to account for the uh, work done in displacing the atmosphere. This will be demonstrated in the uh, following examples. Okay. Now, in case it is a work absorbing device, we uh, simply uh, move the reversible work up to the numerator. So, this is nothing but uh, w u reversible divided by w u actual and following the same steps as this, we may uh, write this as uh, 1 minus t 0 sigma divided by x 2 minus x 1 plus t 0 sigma. Now, in case of uh, devices which are neither work producing nor work absorbing, a very general form of second law efficiency may be defined like this. It is a 2 equal to exergy recovered divided by exergy supplied. So, we supply a certain amount of exergy to the device and we recover a certain amount of exergy from the device. The difference between the two of course, is the exergy that is destroyed within the device and that may be uh, used to define an efficiency for this device. Okay. In case of a steady flow device, we may write this as sigma across the outlet stream of m dot times psi divided by sigma across the inlet streams for m dot times psi. Okay. Of course, um, um, we may also we also understand that exergy recovered is equal to exergy supplied minus exergy destroyed, and that is what we have done here. T zero times sigma dot is the uh, exergy destroyed. So, we may uh, rewrite this expression in this manner. Okay. So, this as you can see um, uh, covers all the possible cases that uh, we wanted to look at. Okay. Flow, non-flow, work producing, work absorbing, neither. Okay. So, we can actually calculate a performance metric for any device that we may uh, come up with. Okay, that is the uh, utility of second law efficiency. It is far more general and contains more insights because it takes into account entropy that is generated in the universe as a result of internal and external irreversibilities. Now, let us see how we calculate um, second law efficiency for the examples that we worked out in the previous course, uh, where we actually did a first law analysis and uh, we determined say for example, um, uh, entropy generated, work, intra work interaction, heat interaction and so on. For the same example, now we will calculate a second law efficiency. 